Hello everyone and welcome to my workshop. Now, have you ever had this problem? If you have, keep watching, I'm gonna try and fix it. Whew. Not sure how we're gonna do this. Now, if I'm honest, the end of this neck wasn't going quite right. The headstock joined to the, uh, the neck wasn't great and my attempt at carving of a loot really didn't come off very well and I have to be honest with you I'm not really any good at carving volutes. With you, a lot of the guitars that I've made I don't have a volute on so I think I might get rid of that and replace it with something else and uh, well Carolyn has been helping me with this. You see, we're going to go for a spring theme for this uh, GGBO 2022 guitar. And we're looking at uh, magnolia flowers because they're really beautiful. They've got lovely petals and things. And Carolyn's come up with this design, which I think will go absolutely perfect just at this point here. Now, I've got to carve this out of wood but I don't want to use one piece of wood. We need different shades and we need different tones. So what I'm going to do first of all is trace it on this paper, get some nice sharp lines and then I'm going to go hunting for some wood. Okay, I've traced that out. I've used some baking paper in the end because that was uh, just clearer. I could actually see what I was drawing. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna cut a little bit of this down. And then I'm gonna mount it on this bit of cardboard. Okay, so now I'm just gonna uh, Put some numbers on Carolyn's original drawing so I can tie it up with my uh, drawing because I need to know which bit is which. So this is number one, two, three, four, five, and number six. Excellent. Now oh, I need a sharp knife. My plan is to create a mosaic of woods in this shape and to assist me with the selection of woods I've cut out some negative versions of the template there uh, so that I can compare them on wood. Now ideally I need the wood to be quite thick unfortunately the only olive I've got is quite thin but I would like olive to form the main centerpiece if you like and I was just looking at that and I thought wow that looks really nice I want to use the grain as the texture on the petals and that looks really nice so that's one option now ideally I want some woods that go from light to dark um, to give me some sort of tone and some idea of the sort of 3D nature of the petals. Um, now this piece of walnut that I picked up yesterday has got nice sort of bands. Um, unfortunately that's the wrong way around. It may be that I can do something with that. If I get it in the right 
position. Also, I've got some of this Zebrano <laughs> that I picked up at the Maker Show yesterday. Now then, wow, there's some real, really nice grain in here. And again, if I can pick the right bit, then I think that will really add to it. So that's an option. I've also got some of this ash, an offcut of the ash there. And again, with some light and dark bits on that. And um, I did spot another piece somewhere. If I can find it. Here we are. Again, this has got some nice uh, changes in tone between the light and the dark wood. So again, there's an option there. Okay, I'm going to go around and see if I can pick the wood. Okay, well I've made a selection. So the main petal is going to be this olive. It's got the lovely figuring in it. Um, then we're going to go to this piece of cherry for number two, because that's embedded with it between two pieces. Uh, for number five, I've got this of Uncle, nice dark piece. Uh, for number four, I've got the Zebrano. And uh, yeah, number three, I've got uh, some Sapili. So I'm going to give it a go and see what it looks like. So what I need to do now is cut these pieces out. I think the best approach to this will be to put a little bit of super glue in there and stick the template on to hold it in place. First off, I'm going to cut all the boards to the same thickness. I'm going to use this olive, I think it's the thinnest piece that I've got. So I'll set the bandsaw up at that point. Let's get trimming. Okay, so there's all the pieces. Now it's a question of sanding and filing to get them all to fit together. I'm not going to rush this I think I'm going to glue this in stages and, and I sort of fancy the idea of putting a veneer between the pieces because I think that will look really quite nice and also gives me an opportunity just to close up any of the gaps that are there which I just yeah I don't think I'm going to get out so let's try and glue this bit first See how that looks when it dries. 
I'm also going to glue these two bits together and I'm going to use some light veneer in between these two. So uh, I think that's going to look really good. So let's get this glued up. As a fiddle, so I'm going to leave those bits now to cure. Okay, I'm on to stage two of this glue up. That looks okay. That looks okay. I've had to do a little bit of sanding again off camera just to get that to, to butt up there really nicely. I'm going to put some more um, light coloured veneer between the two, and this is going to be a fiddle. Um, I've got this little jig set up to help me so I think I'm just going to dive in get the glue on and then we'll see if we can glue all this up I've put some wax on this paper so I'm hoping that it's not going to stick okay. now I've got to do this from the back so here we go Just one position where it absolutely fits and I've got to get that right. And that looks to be it. Okay, so now <laughs> it's a question getting a couple of clamps in there. I did a, a trial clamp up earlier. So I think I'm okay. Right, there's nothing else I can do with that now. Whew, gotta let it dry. I have noticed on the back of this that there's a bit of a gap there and that's when I was sanding it, I've obviously shaved a bit too much off the back of this on the front it butts up so what I'm going to do is fill that with some uh, dust and glue once it's dried from the back push it right down in I'm hoping that there's enough depth at the front to uh, to give me a nice tight edge anyway it's just one more piece to be glued in and that will be done once this is cured I can't do any more with the neck at the moment so I think I'm going to have a look at the body um, and there's a couple of things that I've noticed. One is that the sides have started to straighten out a bit so I'm going to have to bend them back. Uh, the other thing I need to do is these joins so what I'm going to do is just sand these edges, these ends, so that I get a nice join with those pieces. Um, which is quite important and I've also got a block here which will then fit in there and I should be able to glue that all in place that's what I'm going to do because the the angle is only slight I tend to do this by eye uh, just with a leveling beam so I'll just get the angle there and then just come around here so I've got to come back here and just run across the end very gently. I'm just using 120 paper. Try not to uh, get a, a, a shape on the end now. I want a very flat end. Just a little bit more. Someone commented that um, the sides of my guitar are quite thick compared with the sort of a normal acoustic. And I think that's partly down to my inexperience. It's only the second hollow body guitar I've made. Um, but also I've got these strange joins in these, this guitar and I think it probably helps to have a thicker uh, piece of wood. 
that those joins are stronger. I'm hoping it won't affect the tone. But, oops, we'll find out, won't we? Okay. So. Oops. To get everything lined up as it's supposed to be. That looks to me about the right angle for that. Now then, let's put this in place. You get a better view than I do actually, because I'm looking around the corner. But here we go. So that, I think, now that needs to pull in more. Okay, so, yeah, I need perhaps a steeper angle there. Okay, a little bit more sanding. I've got the angle right, I've just not got it quite up to the front edge there, so I'm just going to put it on this block and just very carefully take it down. not to get in the way of the camera. I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to do the other side. So the first thing I need to do is just to get the angle of this piece here joining the the neck block there um, and again I'm going to do it by eye I'm just going to mark it with a pencil like that and then I'll just run my finger along sorry I have got shaky hands today so there we are something something like that and now see if I can get it at an angle this is the uh, this is the fiddly bit trying to get something that gives me the right angle. Yeah, now I'm going to go. I'm going to go down low for this one. Go down low. Yep. Now, through the magic of modern video, you've managed to avoid watching me go back and forth with this piece quite a number of times <laughs> but I do have something now that fits and it's quite snug so that's good so now I think I'm going to concentrate on this this join here I'll just mark the angle now then oh here's a question which bit do I which bit do I shape? Do I shape that bit and shape that bit there? I think I probably do. I think I'll probably shape the small bit to fit into there. Okay, that means sawing a bit off. You know, it's amazing how useful this little engine is square is. It's, it's not an expensive, it's one of those faithful ones and it's, um, well, really useful. Okay, now then. How do I cut that? I need a piece of wood.
Now, because this has straightened itself out a little bit, I'm not getting the, the true angle that I need there. So before I do anything, um, and I, I think I'm going to have to make a new one of these little uh, fillets in the in the corner there. But before I do anything, I'm going to I'm going to bend this one back, and um, we'll we'll bend this the back of this back a little bit more as well because it's just gone out very slightly. But this one's gone out quite a bit, and it's not really following the shape that I want. So uh, over to the bending iron. I've had this warming up for about an hour. We've got to 92 degrees. Gosh, I think that must be a record. Though. Okay, so, I know what I need to do. Let's give it a go. I've put this piece back in the frame and I'm just going to uh, clamp it quite tightly with this clamp. Perhaps put another one on. And just leave that to settle. Okay, so while I'm letting the bottom half of the guitar fix into place in the, uh, in the frame there, um, I'm going to try and stick this together and I don't think I can do it all in one go because it's a nightmare to clamp so I think my approach is this I'm going to glue that one into there first let that set and then glue that side on now I can never get clamps in here so I'm going to try a trick that uh, my friend Chris Franklin has suggested and that is using some of this mitre bond super glue CA glue with the uh, mitre pen here alongside some Gorilla wood glue so what I'm going to do is put some super glue down each side of there and with some wood glue in the middle and on this side I shall rub the, the pen the uh, activator pen on there and then hold that into place so that in theory the super glue is the clamp and the uh, wood glue is the main support I'll try not to get my arm in the way but uh, I'll normally end up doing that so here goes super glue on each side try not to stick my fingers onto it gorilla wood glue in the middle yeah i'm gonna block the camera aren't i sorry So it's all going to squeeze out, I assume. Right, okay, so now activate a pen. And I've got a line on there. I need to line it up on. So let's go. Hold it into place for 10 seconds, apparently. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, <laughs> that feels pretty strong. Hopefully the mitre joint glue will hold it as well. Um, we'll see. And then um, I can come in once that's dried. I won't do anything until it's dry. And then just join those two up. And uh, well, that should be it. Right. Now I'm going to tidy up, call it a day.
Okay, so here we have the sanded piece. Now then, I have to say, it looks a bit more like a tulip than it does a magnolia. But um, yeah, this is my interpretation of uh, Carolyn's drawing. Um, now I have to, had to change it a little bit because um, a magnolia uh, petal will go out like this and uh, well, I can't really afford to have anything go out there. In fact, I've got to cut this right down so that you just get a hint of some of these pieces. But anyway, I think it's going to look pretty good. So the next challenge is I've got to fit that there. Now I need to do some prep work on this to allow me to fit that. So I think that's what I'm going to have a go at. Before I launch into shaping the back of the neck, I've got a problem with the top of the headstock, which one of you keen-eyed folks spotted, and I'm very grateful for you spotting that. Let me show you close up. Right, I've made a, a right old muddle with this headstock, and one of the things I should have done is have the headstock slope, start the scarf joint, start underneath the fretboard. Uh, this fretboard should be much further along and the result of that is as you see there's this long gap before the slope starts on the headstock which isn't going to be very good because the strings are just going to catch on that wood as they go down there so what i need to do is introduce a slope now it won't be as um steep as, as I've got it at the moment but what I think I can do is introduce a slope by taking that piece off there. Now obviously that's going to weaken this even further but I'm hoping that the wood that I'm going to put on the underside will provide the strength that I need. So I'm really uncomfortable about this. I think I'm going to do this first. I'm going to get this angle right first and then, um, then I'll concentrate on the back. And I make myself a cardboard template so I can adjust the positioning of this on the uh, the neck. Now this should give me the rough positioning of this, and then I can refine it once I've. Once I'm happy with this position. So what I'm trying to achieve here is first of all I want to cover up all of this rubbish there. I've got a van call here and I've got a van call in that line there. So I'm sort of thinking, well, OK, if we if we centre this middle section of this petal, then that should look quite nice there. And I'm just wondering then whether the van call comes round and then effectively joins back up with this line. You know, how does that look? Obviously, a lot of that is going to go. Um, and of course, the big question is then, will it look out of context when we chop it all off? Or is it obvious that it is going that way? It's going to be one of those things that actually we don't really get the full benefit of until we've done it. Conversely, I could go there. And try that. So effectively... 
that comes in there. Now I sort of think this needs to be in the center. Almost, I think I almost need to center it like that to be perfectly honest with you. I think perhaps I'm a bit off there. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll rub those lines out and then do it again. Okay, what I've done. I've made a more accurate template and I've um, I've marked where I need to go up to in the neck. Now, I'm going to need to take quite a bit of material off. I'm going to try and create a flat um, plane there, if I can. Was at least as flat as I can get it. So this is not going to be easy. Um, well, let's have a go. Here it goes. I think this is called um, open truss rod neck surgery. It's a new, uh, new guitar making technique. <laughs> <laughs> One that I don't think will be taken up by anybody. I'm gonna have to go lower than the truss rod <laughs> so uh, yeah but that's fine I, I sort of thought that I might need to do that you know for any new builders out there this is really not the way to do it um, so <laughs> I apologize please don't uh, do what I do. I have to say though, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? Eh? You just, it's like, um, it's like one of those surprises, isn't it? Gosh, those uh, things you used to get as a kid. Just didn't know what was gonna be in the packet. My guitars are a bit like that. You've no idea what's gonna end up, what you're gonna end up with. <laughs> I think I'm getting to the point where I need to start shaping the underside of this to fit around this neck because I my mind is just completely blown with the three dimensional aspect of all of this so I need to start creating that three dimensional aspect and to do that I'm going to use this okay so this gives me the an idea of that curve that I need to create on the back of there. Now, what I can only say was hours of chiseling and sanding and um, well, I didn't film it all because quite honestly I think you'd have lost the will to live and I nearly did. I've got this fitting. Um, I used shielding paint on there to try and mark where it was catching. 
which was a good idea in one way and a bad idea in the other because it's a horrible stuff and it gets everywhere. Anyway, um, I've got something that fits now. Um, it's it's not it's not perfect, and I think what I'm going to have to do is put some binding round the uh, the end of this headstock just to uh, to finish it off. What I'm going to do. I'm going to glue this, but I'm going to mix wood dust in with the glue to try and fill some of the cavities that I've got there. Because there's some there's some gaps which I just cannot get get out. That one in particular is quite a nasty one, but I've got I mean I've got a join there. So I, if I can fill that cavity, I might with the binding on it, 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 it I think it's going to look okay. So time to glue up. Okay, I just had a bit of a panic then. I had to take it all off, clean all the glue off because I thought the truss rod was jammed and it's not. This this end piece here doesn't turn. It's a thread it, uh, rod inside there that turns. And I thought I'd jam that. Oh dear me. Okay, let's start again. This time I can put some just masking tape on there and I haven't got to worry. So, Take two, glue up. Well, I don't think I've got this many clamps in such a small area. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six clamps really pushing that down. So, uh, well, Gonna have to leave it now. Well, this has been interesting. And I think I'm gonna have to clear up. There's a bit of a mess on this bench. Now then, the fate of this neck still hangs in the balance, but I'm afraid you're gonna have to wait to see if I can fix this. I'm confident, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, I've also got some other little bits done. I've carved the neck block to look a little bit nicer inside the body, along with the, uh, the, the block that's gonna go at the end of the guitar. And I've also uh, stuck one side of that little fillet on the uh, top side of the guitar. Now I just need the bottom edge of the guitar to uh, fix a little bit in the frame there, and then I should be able to glue the fillet in on that one as well, and get the body in production which would be really good but anyway that's going to have to be in a future episode in the meantime thank you very much for watching thank you for all your comments they are really helpful and uh, i really appreciate those and uh, don't forget to hit subscribe if you're not subscribed uh, well i'll see you next time in the meantime stay safe cheers